we're not wise to have ourselves properly assessed by good professionals if we do go through pain, but to understand there's an absolute relationship between even our brain's perceptive capacity of pain that goes up in stress, stress hormones go up, muscles lock down. How do we breathe when we're stressed? I'm, I'm, I want to speak to this point a little bit. How do we breathe when we're stressed? We don't. One of the things, Dr. Sarno, this great physician, an American original, absolutely love his stuff. He said, you know, and this was a guy who was at NYU, New York University Medical Center, I mean, one of the top shelf medical establishments in the world. And he said, look, most pain is absolutely unresolved emotion because the emotion heightens the stress response and the muscles and the nerves lock down. There's less blood flow, there's less oxygen, there's pain produced. He, he had a really simple model of how he looked at it, and we know so much more than when he really came to this understanding in the 1980s. But the point is, is that when we have this emotional stress and the stress posture and the stress physiology, we're not getting oxygen and we're not getting blood to our organs and to our bones and our joints and our nerves and our tendons, and it always, always, always can produce pain. And it's amazing, too, that one of the coolest things about the work we do here is helping people to breathe again. I think you guys were both at the Yoga One event. I know you were too, Laura. And so what do we do a lot of? You know, you guys breathe and you move with Thai. We did a bunch of conscious breathing. All these things begin to reactivate the system. So I think that this is a good time to actually do a demo of our work. I'm going to show you a couple aspects of what I do so you can just have a sense for it. And then I'll explain exactly what the toolkit is. But you know, we need a break from the mental conversation for a few minutes. So we'll pause the video. And um, I'm just going to be working um, with someone here who's actually had care in New York City. And I'll let him introduce himself in a moment. And then I'm just going to really engage a very simple entrainment with him to show you network spinal analysis. So this is the very gentle. Um, are you filming? I'm still filming. Good. So maybe edit out that little blip here. And action. I want to show <laughs> network spinal analysis. And network spinal analysis is this very, very powerful and progressive application of chiropractic, although it does not resemble traditional chiropractic at all. I know a lot of you probably have never been to a chiropractor. I was originally trained very classically as a chiropractor. And I love the work. The work's amazing. It's beautiful for what it is. But I felt a deep lack as I learned as I initially practiced because I felt like there was so much other stuff happening for people that this was going on. And I, I, I felt like we couldn't get to the depth. I went through my own pretty massive health crisis. My thyroid shut down, so I had hypothyroidism, I had irritable bowel syndrome, I had constant headaches, terrible headaches. I would get sick every couple of months, really sick, and you know, I get terrible sore throats all the time. Um, it, was, it was like this fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue kind of thing that I had. This, just every system seemed to be totally depleted. I would wake up at night and like, whole, like my whole right side of my body would be numb, like I couldn't walk. Um, and obviously, I had all the standard medical work done, and they were like, don't have to tell you, but nothing's really wrong. You've got 10 different parasites. You don't have the right bacteria here, but your brain and your spinal cord are normal. You know? And I didn't feel normal. I felt really, really sick. And paradoxically, this is when I was in chiropractic college. So ostensibly, one would think that during this time, you know, I'm supposed to understand all these things. Of course, as a student, you don't understand anything. And even to this point, I don't really understand anything. But I, didn't, I couldn't figure it out, and I was working at that time with some really, really famous medical doctors in Santa Monica, California, and they were sort of the holistic functional medicine spa to the stars. And I worked with them, and I learned from them, and yet their methods weren't helping me. I was getting adjusted all the time. That wasn't helping me. I was getting acupuncture needles shoved in my body in all sorts of different places all the time, and it wasn't working. Not that those things aren't amazing, but I wasn't getting to this. So I started getting this work done. Someone said to me, I know this guy. He does this thing called network. And I was like, no, that stuff's way too weird. <laughs> that is weird stuff. And I had a real deep belief in my mind that I, I, I couldn't be weird. And there's a lot of reasons that that happened. But I had a really difficult relationship with my dad growing up. 
we have a great relationship now, but I had a very difficult relationship with him, and he was a very preeminent neuroscientist. So I had this standard of what it would be to be successful and smart and good enough, and it meant being that. So I had this deep unconscious thing inside that said, if I'm harp playing fairy, <laughs> that if I'm, any, if I'm intuitive and I'm an artist and I, and, I, and I have the sense of flow with people and I can do these things, I won't be good enough. So I won't get too far into the story, but needless to say, they said, you got to do this thing called network. And I'm like, I've seen it and I, I'm not having it. They're like, just go, just do it. And I'm like, I'm already a doctor. Why would I go do these things? So I went to this guy's office. I got entrained. I bawled on the table. My body started moving in funny ways. And when you know it, week two, three, four, five, six weeks, eight weeks later, I'm like, I feel amazing. And not only did I feel amazing, but I started to, stuff from my childhood and from my past started to come up. I started to be able to touch my toes again. My digestion got better. I used to take seven or $800 of supplements per month just to get by. I went down to a few things. Um, my digestion improved. My headaches went away. My back pain basically went away. Um, I felt brand new. And I was like, what is this work? So I poured myself into learning this work for the last 10 years and to the best of my capacity mastering it. So that was my journey into this work. And so it's a really unique form. And as you watch, just keep in mind that it is strange in the sense of it's not conventional. It, we, we rely a lot on, on a, a, accessing a person's body, mind, their energy, their physiology, their emotions, and all this stuff. So you'll watch. And strange things may happen, meaning you may see someone move. They may start to breathe in funny ways. And if it's too weird for you, don't worry about it. Just let it go and just forget the whole thing. But I want to tell you ahead of time so you're not totally freaked out when you see it. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Then I'll show some different breathing work that I'll do. And this is the other part of what we teach in our toolkit, our mind-body toolkit here. And both of these things are exceptionally healing. Sound good? Do you mind?